Hey guys, it's Krista Watson here from Krista Quilts, and today I'm excited to teach you how to use my spray basting technique on a large king size quilt. Now, normally I baste using my design wall behind me, and if you want to check out that method, be sure to see my other videos. However, I'm demonstrating on my interlinked quilt top, which you see behind me. Right now, I haven't basted it yet, and this quilt was so big, it was king size, that it won't even fit all the way on my design wall. So rather than trying to assemble the layers on my design wall, I'm going to show you another method. I'm going to take it outside, set up a couple of plastic tables in my backyard, and I'm going to show you how to do my layering and spray basting technique outside flat on a table. So let's take a look. So I'm starting with my quilt backing, my quilt top, and a king size batting. I'm using 505 Adhesive Spray, which is the only brand I use for this technique. I tried it once, it works great, and I've never had a need to try anything else. Also, it won't gum up my needle while quilting, and it completely washes out of the quilt. I placed a large flat sheet underneath my plastic tables to catch some of the overspray. I'm starting with the quilt top first, and I'm laying it out wrong side up. Two eight-foot plastic tables pushed together will hold up most of the quilt. If the quilt were smaller, I could get away with just one table instead. I'll take some time to open up the quilt and let gravity pull down the sides of the quilt to smooth out any wrinkles. Before I begin spraying, I'll shake the can and spray a little bit to make sure the nozzle flows cleanly before I apply it to the quilt. Then I'll spray a consistent amount over the wrong side of the entire quilt top. Following the pattern of the quilt will help me ensure I get coverage over the whole thing. I'm spraying all over the top and then the sides to make sure I don't miss any of it. Now I'm not spraying it on very thick, just enough to lightly coat the entire quilt. I'm using just one can for this keen size quilt and I'll probably have some leftover spray still left in the can when I'm done. As I make my way around the quilt, I'll lift up the corners to make sure I cover the entire area and I'll switch hands while spraying if they start to get tired. Now I know that the directions usually say to spray the batting, but I found that it's so much easier to assemble the layers if I spray the quilt top and the backing separately. When this is all done, I'll set aside the quilt top and repeat this process on the backing. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the quilt back, which is larger than the quilt top. Notice how my layers aren't nicely folded. It's all going to get smoothed out during the basting process, and then I'll iron it all at the end. So there's no need to stress about keeping everything perfectly folded up right now. I'm laying it out wrong side up. My quilt backing is at least four to six inches larger than the top on all four sides. This will give me a bit of wiggle room as I'm smoothing out the backing so I don't have to line things up perfectly. The backing is so large that it's touching the ground on both sides of my double tables, but that's okay since I have that sheet there. The important thing is I don't miss any of it when I apply the basting spray. Also, if your quilt is a rectangle like mine is, you'll want to keep track of which side is the top and which is the bottom, especially if you're working with a directional print. I'm going to spray the entire backing from edge to edge, even though I know a bunch of it around the edges will get trimmed away later. I'm walking around the entire quilt backing, ensuring that I'm spraying all the areas, the top, the corners, and the sides. I try to focus on one area at a time so I can remember where I need to go next and make sure the entire backing is coated in a fine mist of spray. I know it can feel overwhelming to deal with such a large quilt, so I'm just focusing on one area at a time to spray, much like I'll do when it actually comes time to quilt my quilt. The reason that I spray the backing after I sprayed the top is so that I can leave it here on the table all nicely spread out. Because this quilt is so big, I'm going to assemble all three layers here on the table. I'll use my hands and a long acrylic ruler, which you'll see in a minute, to smooth out the layers as I go. Now it's time to add the batting. I'm using a king-sized silk batting from Hobbs. I always take a picture of the batting I'm using with my quilt top so I'll remember which batting is in each quilt. This comes in super handy as I experiment and try out different battings to see which ones I like. I haven't used silk very much so this is going to be a fun experiment when I quilt it. 
The natural fiber is soft and breathable and it will cling to the quilt layers, which means it's not going to shift on me while machine quilting. Here's a bonus tip. As long as you use natural fiber materials in your quilts, like cotton, silk, or wool, you can quilt as densely as you like. It's not the quilting that makes your quilt stiff. It's the materials that you put into your quilt. So if you're putting a lot of man-made plastic type of materials into your quilt, that's what's gonna make it stiff. So that's one of the main reasons I use cotton fabric and also 100% cotton thread for piecing and quilting. Stick with soft and supple materials that breathe and your quilt will be warm, soft, and snuggly no matter how densely you quilt it. As I smooth out the batting on top of the sticky backing, I'm mainly just focusing on the area on top of the table. Once the layers are assembled together, I'll work on making sure the sides are nice and smoothed out too. If you have a helper, that can help speed things up as they can help you lift and lower the batting right on top of the backing. But I wanted to show you that it can still be done with just one person, even if it takes a little bit longer to move all the layers and smooth it all out. I timed myself while doing this and smoothing out the backing took less than 10 minutes. In fact, each layer only took about 10 minutes to smooth and the entire basting process only took about an hour and a half. And that was stopping and getting my video so set up. So it's actually a pretty quick process. I'm using a long acrylic ruler to smoosh the two layers together and smooth them out as I go. This acts as sort of an arm extension, giving me more coverage with each arm movement as I smush everything together. Usually I'll iron my batting ahead of time to work out any folds and wrinkles, but honestly, I was a bit lazy this time around and I didn't do that step. So my batting looks slightly disheveled now, but trust me, it will all be flat and smooth when I'm done basting. You can see that the quilt backing is peeking out under the batting. That's a good sign. That will all get trimmed away later and I'll use the extra bits as practice samples when it's time to machine quilt. If you feel any type of bump or wrinkle in your backing while basting, you can simply lift up the batting layer and reposition it as needed. Don't feel like you can't move apart the layers if you need to. So the trick with adding the quilt top and getting it all smooth is to lay it out without scrunching up the layers underneath. First, I'm getting the quilt top roughly in position over the batting. As I position the top, I need to ensure there's enough batting and backing sticking out underneath the quilt top at all times. The long sides were good to go, but when I checked the short end of the table, I realized that the top was too far over in one direction without enough batting and backing underneath. No problem, it's just a matter of folding up the long sides so the quilt top is now in thirds on top of the table. Then I can give it a little tug to pull it back into position. Now I can drape one third of the top over the side that's closest to the camera. Once I check that's in a good spot, I'll drape the last third of the top off to the far side of the table and check all the sides again to ensure that I have complete coverage underneath. Again, if you're a little bit out of whack, don't worry about it. Take the time you need to reposition the quilt. So this is what I mean by leaving yourself some wiggle room so that you can finagle the quilt top into position as needed. Now I can smooth out the center of the quilt and smush all three layers together. Even though I'm very short, my arms can still reach at least halfway across the width of the table on each side. So I'll spend a little time smoothing out just the center portion of the quilt top that's on top of the table right now. So far, I've smoothed out the center third of the quilt. Now it's time to pull the layers to one side so that I can smooth out the front third of the quilt. I'm using my long acrylic ruler again to help me smooth the top layer and smush everything together. While I'm smoothing, I'm also using the ruler to keep the seams lined up nice and straight. I'm also checking to ensure that I don't feel any bumps that would indicate a tuck or a fold on the back. Think of it as giving your quilt a nice massage to smooth everything into place. Once the front third has been patted down all nice and flat, I'll use my specialty Krista Quilts batting shears to trim off the excess batting and backing along the front of the quilt. These heavy duty shears cut through thick layers like butter. They are so much faster to cut than with regular scissors, saving wear and tear on your hands. I'm also going to use them to trim off the sides of the quilt that I've just smoothed out. 
I'll trim the rest later once I've moved the quilt over to the other side. I'm trimming the excess batting and backing so there's about one to two inches extending beyond the quilt top. If I leave any more than that, you'll take the risk of the edges folding underneath and quilting through many more layers than you want to. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's done that. Now, if you notice small wrinkles while you're moving the quilt around during basting, just know that you'll have a final chance to iron that all flat in just a few minutes. Trust the process and keep going. Once the back third of the quilt is on top of the table, I'll repeat the process. I'll smooth out each layer separately if needed, or give it a little tug to work out any folds or wrinkles. Taking the time now to ensure the quilt is nice and flat will make it so much easier when it's time to quilt. I'll smooth the back third of the quilt again with the acrylic ruler. Then I'll use my batting shears to finish trimming off one of the shorter ends. Then I'll trim the long end, and finally the other shorter end so that all of it is trimmed off around the edges. I can either wash up those trimmed fabric pieces and throw them in my scrap pile, or I can use them as small samples for machine quilting practice. Now it's time to fold or roll up the quilt and then bring it inside for the final step, ironing the quilt to set the glue. So this is the final step of my spray basting technique, and it's really where the magic happens. The can of spray does not mention the need to iron, but this is a technique I've developed and practiced through lots of trial and error. Ironing both sides of the quilt really does help the quilt stay together while machine quilting, so there's no need to pin it. Just be sure you practice on a small sample of the same fabric, batting, and basting spray you plan on using to make sure you know how it's gonna react before you put it all together. I'm starting by ironing the back side of the quilt first. I'm laying it on top of a big board that's placed right on top of my regular ironing board. Although this does take a little extra time, it really does make a difference when quilting. In fact, my entire basting process takes less than 90 minutes from start to finish for such a big quilt. And of course, small quilts are faster. Just like basting, I'll work on one section at a time. I'm using a hot, dry iron with no steam. The quilt is heavy, so it takes a minute to pull it back into position after I iron each section on top of the ironing board. And you'll still notice a few wrinkles on the back as I go, but these are just minor and they'll shift back into place once the quilt is basted and ready to quilt. What you're looking out for is big tucks or big wrinkles that would cause a pucker while you quilt. But if you've smoothed everything out on a big table ahead of time while basting, this won't be much of an issue. Now I'll flip the quilt over to the front side and repeat the process, ironing one section of the quilt at a time. It's a little easier to keep track of where I've ironed on the front side of the quilt because I have the blocks I can follow. I can figure out how many blocks or rows will fit on top of the ironing board at a time. Fortunately, half of the quilt fits on top of my big board, so I only had to make two passes across the quilt to iron it all. If you're looking for a big board, you can just Google big board to find one online. I've also seen them for sale occasionally at quilt shows. Taking the steps to press the quilt top, smooth each layer while basting, and then press the entire quilt after basting will really ensure good results while machine quilting. It's basically a piece of plywood with a lip around the edges that fits right on top of a regular sized ironing board. It's covered with batting and muslin that are removable and washable. And I'm just using a cheap iron to press the quilt, nothing fancy. Every time I buy an expensive iron, I end up dropping and breaking it, so I just quit doing that. This iron heats up quickly and I'm using the hottest setting. This quilt pattern is called interlinked and it comes in four sizes. I've made the largest size king size. If you leave off the borders, it would be a large throw or double size, and there's a couple other options included in the pattern as well. This is the biggest quilt I've ever made. I'm just so glad that my spray basting technique still works on such a large quilt. If you'd like some machine quilting ideas for how to quilt your quilts, be sure to check out my books and my other video tutorials. 
And just remember, I'm here to cheer you on every step of the way.